But look at this one. $30,950 listed for postcards of Ty Cobb PSA 4.5 Rookie. Well, welcome back to some Postcards. Today, we got five things to go through. I added a segment. So first, I'm going to go through the what sold. I sold 19 cards. So you want to look at the variety that people are buying. Not just the prices, but the variety. Then a the special topic for the postcard today, baseball postcards. Very interesting topic. And for the poll, I put one out there and said, do you use all 80 characters in your titles? Do you use the whole string? Do you put stuff in there just to fill it up? We're going to talk about that. And then the new segment is show and tell. I was going to call it the viewer corner, but I figure it's like show and tell. People send me stuff in email of different things, and I'll show it on the videos. Today we got two, and they're one from Boldy Girl, and then another one, the old buffalo talking about a few things. It's a different type of card. It's got some metal on it. Maybe someone knows what they are. And then I got a couple of viewer comments at the end. You always want to stick around for those. Those are comments from viewers in email or YouTube that I go over. But let's go ahead and get started with the what's sold. 19 cards sold. They're all different. A lot of different prices, a lot of different variety. First one here is, this is the a lighthouse, Abiscon Lighthouse, Atlantic City, Georgia, at night. There's the lighthouse right there at night. Nice card, sold for $7.65. Atlantic City. Some Atlantic Cities are just average, most of them are. But that one did pretty good. Next one, these cards are going to Canada. And they're Canada cards. Three of them sold for $13.03. This is the bridge at Island Park in Toronto. Undivided back. So that one's going. And then we got some kind of waterfall or something in this way in Canada. And that's a divided back posted. And then we got a Lake Road in Canada Lake. Right there. And that's an undivided back. So those three cards are in Canada. Our Canada cards go into Canada for $13.03. Next thing I sold the boat, USS Curtis, AV-4. Just a publisher card. It's got a little publisher there. These are ones they bought. The club that I bought that from. Next one sold for $5.65. The boat sold for $4.65. This is the San Susi Estate of RM Leach, Webster Lake, Franklin, New Hampshire. It's a lake. Someone knows what that is. Posted 1940, 565. Next one sold for 765. This is the Point Set, Point Set Hotel. Not, I think they're missing an A. Point Set. Just a hotel card, and I can't tell when 1914 or no, it's the 14th. 45. I think it's 1945. Is that card? Just to divide it back, and that sold for seven sixty-five, and that's located in Carolina, South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina. Next one sold for fourteen oh nine. I must have sent an offer to it. This is the Boardwalk and Pavilion, Bradley Beach, New Jersey. Bradley Beach. Remember Bradley Beach? That was right there. Fourteen oh nine. Posted nineteen thirty-eight. Divide it back. Bradley Beach, 1409. Next is a ship, just an older ship. Not for sure what it is. Windjammer. It's got a stamp box and it's got everything on there, but it looks it already has a pre-made message on it. 465. Sold the USS Denver publisher card. Unposted, brand new out of the box. 465. Next is this person bought two pieces of, uh, one is a cover of the Denver, USS Denver. This is one of those first day covers. It's got the ship 
right there, USS, De USS Denver. On the cover, it was posted, uh, postmarked on the ship, and then he bought the ship. He probably was on there. This is one of those prints, uh, semi-gloss front, matte back, and so he bought the cover and he bought the ship. And look, it says on the back, decommissioned. Those two are nine dollars and thirty cents. Then I sold a print of the USS Buckner. Another, another ship. This one, I sold the. Uh, Sesquai Centennial International Exposition, Philadelphia. It's a white border card. Of a, there, it's got the stamp on there, two cents. The guy asked me if I had any more of these, and I looked and I didn't. But I do have a video coming. It's for the World's Fair and the Expos. That's a one I've always wanted to do, but there's so much to it. There's so many about it. The only thing I know of fairs is county fairs that we have around here. So I'm learning a lot about that, and that video should be out first of the year or end of the year. It takes a little bit of doing with those, that one. I had to find all the different expos and world's fairs. I think I got them all. Now I just need to go do the data. Next one is greetings from Dest Destin Beach, Florida. 465. Just a beach. Some plants. Somebody must know what that is. 465. Then, now this one is a photo of the Earl, USS Earl DD-35 from World War II is when the ship was in service. This is a real photo, it's got a little curve on it, but this, I can't use eBay standard envelope, I'll have to use a stamp and a label, and that sold for $8.55. Next one is another naval base, US naval base, Subic Bay, Philippines. This is the old gates to the place. And there, anybody that's been to Subic Bay probably know what that is. And there, I know my brother when he was stationed on the Midway or over in the Philippines, he always wanted to go back to Subic Bay. I guess that was the highlight of being over there. I wasn't in the Navy, so I'm not for sure. And then I sold Warren Beatty. This is one of those arcade exhibit cards. They said they used to put these types of things maybe in a vending machine, but that's a younger Warren Beatty. I don't know how he's 80s or something now, I think. But all those cards sold overnight, a total of 19 pieces, 19 cards, for $115.02. My average sale price was $605. So my goals, I want to do over $70 a day. I met that. I want to do 14 cards minimum a day. I met that, and I want to raise my average sale price. I did that. So today was a good day. I got 19 cards to mail out, and really good. So now let's get into baseball postcards, a special topic. Baseball, I played it since I was five years old. I, all the way through high school and afterwards and toured down south with the colleges and all that stuff. And then I got a family and I had to start working. But it was a pastime that we played minor league, little league, pony league, out Palomino league, the whole work. I don't follow it as much anymore on TV in the major leagues. I have went to a couple games this year, the Sox games with my older brother. He gets like 20 tickets a year or something, so he's taken me a couple times. But baseball is a pastime. Baseball is collectible. A lot of people. So I'm going to walk through and give you some background, some history to build a foundation for the base, for baseball. And while I do that, I'm going to show you some baseball postcards I found. Then after that, we're going to figure out if these things, what the sell-through rate is. And I found some really high price ones, and some high price ones, and then some average price ones. So we're going to go through the pricing and kind of see where these fall. So if you see them, you get a better idea, have a better chance of doing something with them. But let's go and let's get some history on baseball. Baseball is a popular sport. It has a long, interesting history. It all started in the 18th century when people in America began playing a game called rounders which was similar to baseball. Over time, different versions of the game were played in various parts of the country. In the mid-19th century, a man named Alexander Cartwright helped to establish the rules of modern baseball. The first official baseball game was played in 1846, and soon baseball clubs and leagues started popping up across America. Kind of like pickleball nowadays. That's really taken off. The game gained even more popularity in the late 19th century 
centuries with the formation of professional leagues like the National League and American League. Legendary players like Babe Ruth, Jackie Robertson, Hank Aaron made their mark in baseball history and their accomplishments continue to be celebrated today. Baseball has evolved over time with changes to the rules and the way the game is played. The introduction of designated hitter in the American League in the 1970s and the use of instant replay in recent years are some examples of these changes. Baseball has also became a global sport with teams from different countries participating in international competitions like the World Baseball Classic. The sport has captured the hearts of millions of fans around the world who eagerly follow their favorite teams and players. Whether it's cheering for a home run, watching a pitcher throw a perfect game, or simply enjoying the excitement of a close match, baseball continues to be a beloved sport with a rich and fascinating history that spans over a century. Baseball postcards are a cool way to collect and learn about the history of the game. These postcards often have pictures of famous baseball players, stadiums, and memorable, memorable moments. They can show players from different eras like Babe Ruth, Jackie Robinson, or Derek Jeter. Some postcards even have fun facts or statistics about the player on the back. Collecting baseball postcards allows fans to have a piece of the game's history right in their hands. It's exciting to see the different designs and pictures, and it's a fun way to connect with the sport we love. Whether it's trading postcards with friends or displaying them in a special album, baseball postcards are a great way to celebrate the magic of the game. I found three facts I wanted to put on here for baseball. The shortest game in Major League Baseball history took place on September 28, 1919, between the New York Giants and Philadelphia Phillies. The game lasted only 51 minutes, with Giants winning 6-1. In 1959, the San Francisco Giants and the Los Angeles Dodgers played a game that had to be called off due to extreme fog. There was too much fog. The game was stopped in the fourth inning with the score tied 2-2, two to two, and it was never resumed or replayed. Baseballs used in the major league games are rubbed with a special mud before each game to remove their shine and improve grip. The mud known as Lena Blackburn Rubbing Mud, that's Lena Blackburn Rubbing Mud, is sourced from a secret location along the Delaware River and has been used since the 1930s. I don't know if they still do that, but it, I found that fact and that's what they said. Lena Blackburn rubbing mud is rubbed on all baseballs before the game to take the shine. So that was a little history about baseball. It, it sets the foundation what baseball is a little bit. Everybody pretty well knows what baseball is. Postcards, do they sell? Now the sell rate, I have the little gauge I usually put up here. The red you want to stay away from, 0 to 3. Average cards that move every day, pays the bills, 4 to 7. A little bit higher, sell, better chance of selling, 8 to 10. And the good ones you always never pass up for the, if it's a good price, 11% or higher. Not guarantee a sale, but it gives you a gauge to say, hey, I got a better chance if I pick up these cards over these cards. And then uh, show and tell today, even though I have in my mind and the way I do my business, there's a card I do that's way in the red. Somebody has taken it to the next level. We're going to see that in a second. But the sell through rate I calculate, I go into eBay, I type in postcard baseball. I get the listed, I get the sold. I take the sold divided by listed, times it by 100 to get a nice percent, round up or down, and that tells me the sell through rate that fits in this chart. So pace, postcard baseball was the query I put in. 5,000 sold, 34,000 listed. That has baseball in the title. Times by 100 gives you a 15% sell-through rate. If you look at that chart, that's a very high card. Still want to be careful with them, and we'll see why here in a second. So I put it up against some other sports just to see where the other sports fall too. So postcard basketball, 13%, still up there. Football was 12%. There was not as many football as basketball and baseball. And then I put rugby. 
different than 9%. It's not very prevalent rugby in the States as it is overseas in there, but 15% salary rate for baseball postcards. Not bad. One you want to take a second look at. And as I was going through, I found some really ridiculous priced ones out there. I don't know. I didn't go through and see because the way out of my area, my realm that I could pay for. But look at this one. $30,950 listed for postcards of Ty Cobb PSA 4.5 rookie. $30,000. Authenticity guaranteed. $30,000. You think that'll sell? I don't know. I'm not in the sports card world. But the next one here is the 1914 Baltimore Terrapins Federal League Team Photo Postcard, SGC. I think that's the grading company. $15,000. Free shipping, authenticity guaranteed, graded. Both of those are graded cards. And then you got the National 1950 National Press Postcard with Jackie Robinson Bowman's co Cocktail Lounge, SGC 88. $10,750. That's great in as well in slabs. And they got the slab on there. So there's some crazy prices out there. I don't know if they're good, bad. I'm not into the sports card world like I am to postcards. But wow, that's a lot of money to put out on there. How would you feel if you sold a card for $15,000? Would you hand deliver it or mail it? I mean, it, I sold a pretty high priced Santa for $1,900. I was a little nervous about sending that out, but I didn't have a lot of money in it, but I would lose what I would have gained. That's a lot of money. I mean, just sitting there, there's $44,000, $55,000 in three cards sitting right there. That's what more than some people make. There's money in cards. You just got to, I guess, learn how to look at those. Then you get into the higher priced ones than we normally see that are in the extreme. Those were very extreme. But here's another graded one that's in a slab, 1929. Benton Reese, Bill Murray, Hall of Fame rookie. It's a PSA graded six, $2,000. That's sold, that's green. The other ones were listed. This sold for $2,000. For $2, then you got a real photo, 1909 Seattle Tucks baseball team, sold for $1,136. Got 11 bids. Boy, I'd like to watch that auction. Crazy money. And then you got one with a pennant, the Pittsburgh Pirates, 1909 World Champions postcard. Best offer on 900, probably took what, 850? Crazy. So there is some really good cards out there for baseball, so you want to check those on that. And it's interesting to see that. You got those real high ones, and you got the other tier here. And now we're going to get into cards that we see every day but before that I see these cards all the time they're the Hall of Fame series I've always tried to get the whole set but they usually go higher than than I know I want to pay I seen them at an auction one time that were but they weren't in great condition and everyone I've always tried to get they went higher than what I wanted but th this is what they are here's a lot of 53 of them for 14 dollars then here's one just for $4.95. But they got like a little, the players, the Hall of Fame, and it's got the little bronze plaque on there. But then you get into a graded one for $81. So all those, and then you got one for $9.99. So that graded one for $81, you think graded or not graded makes a difference in the baseball world, the card world? It looks like it does. So anybody that does that, let me know what you think of these cards. But why would that be $81? And then the other one, the other one is $9.99. $4.95 and $14 for 53 of them, the whole set. But that one is $81. But you'll see the, the series out there. Don't pay a lot for them because like they don't sell singly very well. But maybe a set would do better or if you got them graded. But we get into some more higher priced ones I found. I, I wanted to keep that going, the theme, because they just kept popping up. Here's one that's another tier down a little bit, but look at this, 1906 Baseball Philadelphia, PA, Columbia Ballpark Photo Postcard. It's a real photo postcard. 
$228. It's a nice looking card. It's got a stadium. Looks looks like it's on by the back with the writing tab on there. $228. Then here's just a Cincinnati, Ohio baseball park grand scan, 1908. Many of us have probably seen cards like this. $204. Looks like it divided back. And then you got one here. Baseball Shad Park, Philadelphia Stands, Ballpark, Players. $175. Baseball, you really want to take a second look on. Maybe a third or fourth look. Because there's some of these cards that are just crazy. They could be worth it. I mean, that's what collectors pay. I just, as I dug through this, I was just amazed. Because I, I knew I'd pick up baseball cards because they are worth more. But I didn't think that many were out there that price. But then we get into what we see every day with the things. Here's one, you know, for it's the, a real photo, uh, West Astoria baseball team photo, $64. Then uh, Cincinnati, Ohio East End Park with a baseball field, $54 of a baseball field like that. That picture must be hard to find. Then the Westside Paul Park, Chicago, Illinois, National League Baseball postcard. $50, got some players on the field and stuff. So if you look at all those, 50, 53, 63, so 50 to 55 dollars for those harder to find, higher priced baseball cards. If you did your homework and CP out it. But just as always, you always get into these lows. And here's one for $1.89, New York Highlanders. The view on the card is a 1908 view. But the postcard is from 2002. It's a repro reproduction. So you always want to make sure you see that and call it out. If you want to put it up, you got to call it out. A lot of times I won't put them up if something like that because it, that it's not the real thing. But it's at the discretion of the seller. But $1.89, then you got the Polo Grounds, which has a baseball thing under $1.95. Stadium, I did that video about stadiums. All of these cards, uh, the bottom one, 555, the last one, would be in the ballpark, but I think they could get a few extra dollars. I, I can't sell cards at that level. It's out there. I don't put those in my equation when I'm comping. The real high ones or real low ones, I look at the average, and I, I want to be have the best average price with the best average sales that I can get. I'm not looking to get top dollar. I'm not getting the lowest dollar. I want to be right in the middle. I want to be on the radar. I want to be that little blip, and I don't want to be where they have to think and make a decision. I say, hey, that's a good price, buy it. Baseball cards with the pricing, it's something that's gonna take a little bit of work. Any baseball cards I get, they go into the special folder so I can spend the time on those cards when I go into research mode. If I'm just in listing mode, I don't go down those rabbit holes. I set those other ones down the side so I don't stop my flow. And then I'll sit down and go through the 10 or 12 cards every so often in a special folder and do the research and stuff like that and come up, try to come up with the best price. Sometimes I don't. I end up going lower than I even thought or stay at my average, my starting price. It just depends what you find. But never pass up baseball cards. Always look at them. Who knew? Now we're going to get into the poll. I send a poll out every Saturday morning. They're already scheduled out there. You can vote on them. I don't know who you, who you are. Nobody knows. But if you leave a comment, it does put your name in it. This poll was, do you use all 80 characters in your title? I touched this on another video before a little bit. Do you always use 80 characters in the title? So eBay gives you 80 characters to put in the title. 44% said yes, 54% said no. 1% had other. I'll go through the comments here real quick and then I'll give you my little spin on this, what I think of it um, with titles. A lot of you probably know what I do with titles. And what my thinking is. So Brian Goodman says most of the time, sometimes, brevity is sufficient. But great titles with relevant keywords help to optimize the views a listing gets. Listing math. Better titles equals more eyeballs. Yes. And I'll touch on a little bit of that. What Brian said here in a second. Thanks, Brian. Then trying to learn this. I think he has a thing he built. An app, that program that he built that puts these cards through, he says, depends if my program has enough characters to pull the info off the card. But in most cases, I usually am right on the mark. So he pulls as much as he can from the card and puts it in there. 
Thanks, Ryan. Then Julie Flicka, most of the time, 80 is good. Other times, too many are not enough. Just depends on the length of the word used or needed. Yep, title needs to be as long as it needs to be. I'll get into it in a second, but titles need to be as long as they need to be. You don't, you're not going to gain that much by doing 80 over 20. Thanks, Julie. And Boldly Grow Picker said most are close, but sometimes there is just nothing else to say. Needs to be as long as they need to be. What is my spin on it? Postcards give you the information that you need to put. Right there, there's your title. Most postcards have been marketed, been through the marketing spin, everything like that. Most of the information is right on the card. If it sold the postcard, it should sell it on eBay, is my thinking. Plus, even though if I put a postcard, flower bed, Kenneth Square, in the state, Pennsylvania, and then I put petunias, tulips, and all this other stuff in there, and I put, you know, fertilizer or whatever, and I put that all the way along, sure, I'm going to get more views into my thing, maybe, just from a key word, but also it brings in people that are not buying a postcard or buying a card. They're just looking and they go on. So you're going to get views, but your, your click to buy rate is not going to be as high your conversion from in, impressions to views to buy is not going to be there. I like to use titles that are readable as English, I call them. I don't put all these cryptic words in there. I got a few out there maybe like that, but most of the time it, you can read left to right based on what the card is. Most people don't read the title. They look at the picture and that's what catches their eye. The photos, the scans, and the price. They don't want to think. You don't want people to think. Putting 80 characters in just to fill it up, a lot of people out there say that helps with the search. Sure, you're going to get search on flower bugs or bees if you put that in there, or purple, but it doesn't, you're getting the wrong piece. Distracts from the main subject of the card, of the card, then I would not put it in there because I want people coming in looking for flower beds in Kenneth Square, Pennsylvania. Those people have more of a chance of hitting the buy button than if someone's coming in looking for a purple flower. They're going to see purple flower in the picture. The picture sells most of it. Plus you're dealing with seven to nine million postcards out there on eBay at any given time listed. Tens of thousands of sellers. So they're all doing things differently and stuff like that. For you to get up and search because you, you put the word purple in, the chance, whatever. Just, I just put them up. What you really want to start gearing to is get out of that big pond, ocean of postcards, sellers and postcards. You're a little fish. I am a little fish. Even with the cards I got, I'm a little fish in a big pond. I want those people to come to this little island called SM Postcards. I want followers. Once you get followers to your store, they are no longer looking at all those 7 to 9 million postcards. They're looking at my 40 some thousand plus postcards. They're searching my store. They're on my island is where I want them. So whatever you need to do to get followers so you can pull them out of that big pond and have them stand on your little island your store is what you really want. And once they're in the store, you want to make it easy for them. Categories, good pricing. Don't put all this cryptic stuff in the title so they can see what they're buying. Don't fill up your description with all the payment info and all this other stuff that if you have negative feedback, on it, that's all common knowledge anymore. eBay even says don't put that stuff in there. They, eBay gives you all that stuff. Only thing I put in my description is I make the title and I copy it to the top of the description. There's nothing else in there unless there's a crease on the card or some damage above and beyond my condition statement, my, my boilerplate condition statement. Say, if there's a big crease, I'll say crease middle card. I'll put that in the condition statement and also in the description. Uh, corner tears and stuff like that. I'll just put corner tear right corner, uh, tear right corner. That's all you need to put in there. You don't need to write a book. No one reads it. I see so much stuff out there still talking about PayPal in descriptions. 
and all the stuff. And eBay gives them all that. But you want to take the people out of that big pond and you want to get them to your island, your little island where you can take care of them. Newsletters, coupons, get people to come into your store and hit follow your store. Every week I gain followers. I'll run a sale once in a while on a weekend, maybe once every two months or something, from a Friday night to a Sunday night. And I'll just do it for those days, and I'll put 25% off, 20 30% off, really cheap. And I'll just let it pick 10,000 things in a price range of my standard postcards. And what that does, it usually gains me three to four followers, whatever, when I do that little sale. I don't get many sales sometimes, so price isn't that big of a driver, but it does bring me followers. And that's what you want to get is followers in your eBay store. But that's, if you want to use all 80 characters, you think it's working for you, that's part of your model, go for it. Me, I'm not going to write that. Sometimes I put postcard flower, postcard car. I don't know what type of car it is. It ain't going to give me any more money. If I did research it and figure it out, I, if I research it and figure out what they wrote on the back, what's that going to, by the time I figured that out and all that stuff, yeah, there's going to be some people out there that might buy it because of that, but that's the 100-year flood. I'm in the business of moving postcards every day. I price to sell, and I price them with my best price. I don't do best offer, I don't promote a lot, and I don't run that many sales, even though I run that little one once in a while. I do send offers, but I put my best price out there, and I'm not on my phone all day long going back and forth with people. I've seen postcards with $3 price with best offer. Glad it's not my store. I just don't do that. It's, that's my model. But if you do it, that's fine and you're successful. But I, I don't have best offer on there. I've had people come in maybe once a month, that would be two months. Would you take $250 for this card? And I got it listed for $5. I just delete the message. That's my answer. I'm not going to go out there and go back and forth over 50 cents. It, it's just not worth it to me and I don't want to do that part of it. But that's the poll. Make sure you subscribe so you see those when I put them out. And they're really easy to do and we usually get 70 to 80, 90 people in there so we get a good view and at the end of the year I'll take them all and I'll do one video on best practices for 2023. So the more people we get into those polls the better results at the end of the year. New section coming to videos. As I get stuff I'd like to put it in every video but I might not have stuff from viewers. So what this is called is show and tell. Remember when in kindergarten, I, we used to have show and tell and they would pick a couple students every week to bring something in. I remember I brought this one toy in one time uh, in show and tell and everybody liked it and I was proud that I brought that. Everybody wanted to play with it, but I wanted to play with it. So it turned into a mess, messy situation. Show and tell. So I get to show you all the stuff I do I want you guys to send me. I want you, if you got a neat card that you found, if you want to give me the prices, or what you paid for, whatever, that's up to you. But just seeing seeing the, the big hauls, how you do inventory, just whatever you want to show and tell, send it to me at contact at smpostcards.com. Sometimes I say Shellmark Sales. That's my major company so I'll put it down here what it is. I keep getting mixed up with that because I said that for years. But just send it to me to contact at postcards.com in a message and I'll take a look at it and if I do use it I'll send you an email. Hey this is going to be on October 7th video. Thanks for sending it. And I'll I'll talk about it. I Send me a message about it too. A story or whatever and I'll use that. And if you don't want me to put your name that's fine too but I'm looking for Send me stuff what you guys are doing. You know, how's your office set up? Did you buy a new scanner? Did you find a neat card? Did you have the best sale ever? Did you lot up your cards and you found while you're lotting them up a card that almost got away? Send me a story of how you're doing it. Not just me talking up here. This is our channel. I had two of these I've been holding out. I wanted to get a third one. I didn't quite have one. I got one, but I, I, I want to save it. So I got two. The first one came from one old buffalo, Dan. He's a long-time viewer of the channel, and he sent this to me a while ago, and I've been saving it, Dan. But I'm going to read, put up on the screen here, and I'm going to put his message here. These postcards have a metal rim around them, and they have a punched hole in the front. Are, were these like luggage tags or something? Does anybody know? But they have a metal thing around the side. So he thought they were pretty cool, and he sent them to me. 
He said, I work at a local museum. I think he's a lighthouse attender too, Dan. I think you took care of a lighthouse out there. In, I think it was California, if I'm right. I work at my local museum, and yesterday not one visitor, so I started rummaging around in our research room and came across two small boxes of postcards. All were donated, and the curators over the years just threw them in the boxes because they were not from our area. Some were neat, but most were something you could would throw in your box for swap meat. <laughs> a lot of glitter ones and two leather ones, but what caught my eye was one with a metal rim and a small hole at the top, and that's what those are I'm showing here. The tiny logo about a bellman makes me think it was attached to a suitcase when someone checked it. Who knows? On the photo side, all those little chicks are eggs and just hatched babies. So look at that. Those are all little babies, and I'll blow it up here so you can get a better look at it. But that's a pretty neat card. And they said, if you want to put it in a video, it's okay. Have you seen this before? You can use my name. No, Dan, I have not seen those before. Th that's pretty cool. So if anybody knows exactly what those are, let me and Dan know. But it, it says the Bellman Association Chicago on the back on the bottom. I thought they were pretty cool. So I got my eyes off if I ever see any of those. But thanks for sharing, Dan. Then, as you know me, with sell-through rates, anything in the red, I don't deal with. It goes in the flea market or whatever. One of those is QSL cards. I just don't do well with those, and most people don't. So Goldie Bro sends me a picture of this. It says, I thought you might like to see this. This is 20000 Card Lot Collection Vintage Ham Radio and CB Amateur QSL Card Postcards. $10,000. That's 50 cents a card. Yeah. Not me. I won't be the one doing that. But as I moved down, I noticed something. It, the seller is called QSL Shop. So now, what is that? This guy specializes in QSL cards? Now I'm up here saying they don't sell? So I go out and look at his store. Here's his ID here, QSL shop. This guy has 17,505 listings out there. He must be really in the ham radios. I would love for this gentleman or person, I'd love to do an interview with him to get his side of the story on QSL cards and what they really do. And what, you know, how he has grown this. His motto, his slogan on his store is the biggest QSL store on eBay. Amazing. He took a niche that I don't deal with. I don't do well. Most people don't in the postcard reselling world. He's taken it and made it work. He has sold over 17,000 items. Has 179 followers. 100% feedback. And he's got 20,000 QSL cards for sale. So he, he's taken something to the next level. So it, it, that just amazed me. So thanks, Boldy, for sending this. Because, yeah, I, that, I'm not the guy for that like he sent it to me. But I, as I looked down, I seen the QSL shop. So if you want to go out and look and see what this guy does, just go into eBay and search the store QSL shop. And if you're watching QSL shop, if you ever do, let me know. Send me a message. And maybe I'll reach out to you and see if we can get on a call. Maybe I can do a video about QSL cards. Bring us bring us more is what I really want to know about those. Because I don't do well with them. They don't sell. The very ornate, the special ones maybe, but not the normal ones. I, I don't list them. So, but that, that was pretty cool to see that. So thanks, Boldly Girl, Chris, for sending that. But that's how the show and tell works. Send me something. And then I'll look at it, and we'll talk about it and share what all you guys do. We all sit in postcards in our offices all day long. Let's show and tell what you got. Fewer comments. First comment was, enjoying your videos, but I have questions. Do you use any kind of bulk listing tool for creating your postcard listings? Nope. I use eBay templates. I did a video a long time ago about that here's the thumbnail I put thumbnails up here and it's not the link where you can click on it but you can go look at my the YouTube channel and you can find that thumbnail it's been about two years or a year and a half ago 
but I use eBay templates. And what that is, it's basically a template. I save it as a listing template in eBay, and most of my stuff is filled out, so when I do a card, I just got to do the title, put the pictures, and cut and paste the title to the description, and then I change my store category, put my SKU number in, and if it's linen, chrome, whatever, and the item specifics enough to get the little blue box closed, and then I go down to price. So it fills out a lot of the stuff that's standard for the postcard. I don't use the six bed or anything like that as I'm comfortable with the eBay template uh, to do that. And that this comment came through email. You can send it an email to me and I won't put it out with your name on there unless you want, you know, it's okay. But do you use any type of bulk listing tool for creating postcard? My answer was no. I use eBay templates and I send them the link to the video. That's the video I showed to go check how I do it. I don't do anything special. I list 50 cards a day, average, every month, most of the time. Sometimes I go a little bit more. But I, I don't sit here for hours and hours and hours and get 20 cards up. I don't go down the rabbit holes. But thanks. Then Dusty comes back. He saw the video where I talked about my how I pack and ship mail postcards, the updated version I just did. I think uh, this video here with me holding up the envelopes. I updated it because I changed it for what I did a year and a half ago. Great videos. I just found the channel. Great. I'm glad you found us. Share. Let everybody know. Have you had any issues with the postcard envelopes being damaged in shipping? I think maybe I overdo it sometimes with packing. Yes, most people will have a tendency to do that. And I, I replied to them, no, I don't see that many. But then I go back to my emails and I find something from Chris Boldy Grow Pickers. He got this. And he put in there and says, this is why you should use better envelopes. He got this back from the post office. It's in an A10 envelope and it was ripped. Things will happen. I can't remember. I wrote back to Dusty and I said, I can't remember the last time I had a damaged one. But you got to think about all that junk mail you get in your mailbox every day. How much of it is damaged? I've never seen a damaged junk mail. So it, it's a hundred year flood thing. When I did the feedback thing, there wasn't any, much about damaged either. Everybody's going to have a problem. So accidents will happen. That's why they call them accidents. But don't base your business on the hundred year flood. The one time in 10,000 postcards you're sold. It, it might happen. Now, if you got a very high, high expensive one, yeah, put it in a box. It could get smashed too. But the chances are a lot lower on there. So, Dusty, no, I, I don't even worry about it. But you want to bring your packaging down to a level that meets your customers okay. And how you can gauge that is feedback a little bit. They'll tell you if you're not, they're pretty picky in the postcard world how you ship sometimes. They, they don't shy away from telling you. You can get it down. I just use. A sleeve for every card in these Echo Swift six and a half by four and a half thing self-sealing envelopes and that's what most of the cards go in and that's brought me down to the level where it's cost-effective I can keep my costs down and I'm not spending a lot of time shipping it doesn't take me long to ship things thanks Dusty and then Old Town Treasures I find that I always sell items when my eBay invoices do. So this is from the video, I think, with the algorithm zone thing I put in there. I was talking about selling things. And he comes up with a coincidence. And I've seen this, and I've questioned myself. And I used to sell toys and stuff, and I had a big, more bigger item, different items and stuff. I don't do those anymore. I thought the same thing because it seemed like, okay, I'm not getting sales. All of a sudden, boom, I get all these sales, and then my feet, my anchor store was due. He can be inactive for a few weeks and suddenly have sales when my store subscription is due. <laughs> so when it's time to pay eBay, eBay shows your stuff more so you can sell it. I think it's a coincidence, but I can't say for sure because I'm not eBay. I, I, I wouldn't look too much into it. Just know that you're going to make sales when the script, subscription's due. But yeah, has anybody else seen that? I, I, I think to me it's a coincidence, but I don't know for sure because I don't know. I'm not eBay. I don't know if they look at that and say, oh, this guy's due. Let's send him more money so he can pay us. Wouldn't put it past them, but I think it never know. So don't forget about baseball postcards. 
give them the third and fourth look. As you saw, there's some money out there. Are you going to hit a home run every time? No. There's a lot of average baseball cards out there. The ones I showed you probably are the top shelf ones. You want the middle shelf going to the top. But if, you can, if you're looking for the middle shelf ones, the average ones, these other ones sometimes pop up, the higher price ones. Maybe not a ten, thirty thousand dollar $30,000 one, but the higher price ones will show up. So look at the bread and butter cards, the average cards, and sometimes you get to know what the other ones are, but I would check those. That's all I got for today. I'll catch you in the next one. Here's some more fish. Bye.